Welcome back. In this session I'm going to cover some of the software you need to run Joomla and give you some suggestions about development tools. First off you're going to need a web server and Apache is by far the most popular but you might also use IIS in a Microsoft environment. The second key piece is PHP and this integrates tightly with your web server. You'll need at least version 5.2.4 to run Joomla 1.6. PHP also comes with downloadable help files and I find the CHM file quite useful to refer to from time to time. The last key piece of software is the MySQL database and you're going to need version 5.0.4 or later. Fortunately for most platforms there are bundled packages available such as Xampy for Windows, Linux and the Mac and this makes setting up your server environment much easier. I personally use MAMP for the Mac to run my Joomla instance. With all that in place, next you need a database administrator. PHP MyAdmin is a popular web-based choice. MySQL itself offers a suite of tools for several platforms. For the Mac, I use SQL Pro as it's a bit more stable than the tools MySQL provides. An optional but useful tool is a program that can show the differences between files and folders. Popular choices here include Delta Walker and WinMerge. Of course you're going to need a browser and nowadays Firefox, Safari or Chrome are all good choices and each includes a valuable suite of developer add-ons. And finally we get to the heavy lifting which is done by your IDE or Integrated Development Environment. Popular choices here are Zen Studio, NetBeans and my personal favourite is Eclipse with PHP Eclipse or you can use PDT as well. While we're on the topic of Eclipse, I want to show you something. Most IDEs have some sort of code snippet support. When we get into the main lessons, I'm going to be using these heavily, so I'm going to show you how to create one so you know how it works. Before we start copying code, we need to add the snippets view to Eclipse. We do this by looking under Window in the menu bar, then selecting Show View. We search for snippets and then click OK. The view will appear somewhere on the screen. I usually have it docked next to the class outline view, but you can put it wherever it suits you. The next steps are to highlight a block of code. Then we right click in the snippets area and select customize. I've already got a category started, but if this is your first time, you need to add one. Next, click the new button and pick new item. Eclipse will give you a blank template to fill in. Change the name to something descriptive. This is the name that will appear in the snippets list. Give the snippet a description if you want, and this will appear as you hover over the snippet names in the list. Then just paste your code in the template pattern area. You could stop here, but Eclipse gives you the ability to add custom variables to the snippet. What I'm going to do is make one for the component name that appears twice in this block of code. I just need to click the new button to create the variable. I'll give it a better name and I'll give it a description. With that I find it's better to be very descriptive because after a while you end up with a lot of snippets with a lot of variables probably doing vastly different things. You can also give the variable a default value if you want. Next just position your cursor where you want the variable to be inserted. Then click insert variable placeholder and then click the name of the variable. Repeat this as many times as you need to. Click OK when you're done. Now let's clear away the code we had in the file and use the snippet to do the same thing. You'll see the new snippet is now in the list of snippets. We just need to double click on it to have it inserted. If there were no variables in the snippet the code would just appear in the file. In our case We've got a variable, so it's going to give us a form that we should fill out. Just type in the value of the variable and then click the insert button. Your snippet should appear in the file with the variable placeholders replaced with the value you typed in. That's pretty cool, huh? Our next lesson is coding styles. I know it's not the most interesting topic in the world, but it's one of the most important, so please don't skip it. I will know if you have. See you soon.